don't make a sound, I heard that the secret to writing killer research statements for MS and PhD admissions is hidden in this library. So I'm here to find out. And it's not just any research statement, it's the one that can make or break your admission. And I found it. So let's dive in. First of all, thank you so much to Mubashir Ali for making the comment and for asking this question. I know many other students also have this question. So this will definitely help a lot of students. First things first, what's the difference between an SOP and a research statement? An SOP is an overall picture of the candidate's profile. It tells the admissions committee about your career goals, your motivation behind pursuing this field, your accomplishments, and why you're the right candidate for that particular MS or PhD position. Whereas a research statement is a very specific document with a very specific goal. The research statement is supposed to outline what is the problem that you want to work on during your MS or PhD research and if you can demonstrate your ability to conduct that research independently, if you know what are the top problems other people are studying in that field and how you can make original contributions in that particular research area. So that's the difference between SOP and research document. Although the purpose of the both documents is the same for the admissions committee to decide whether or not to give you a particular scholarship and admission or not, but they have very different uh, structure, very different goals. So you have to know the difference between them before you start writing any of them. Now, my tip number one is to brainstorm and prepare. Do not skip this step. You cannot just start writing your research statement directly without preparing for it. And to help you prepare for it, I have prepared this uh, worksheet that you can find in the description and you can fill this out for yourself. I have left my sample answers and a sample research statement also in it in case you want to look, but please do not copy anything as is. I have intentionally left some misleading information in it so that nobody can really copy it as is. There are intentionally left mistakes in it. But what's the purpose of this document, an SOP or a research statement? The purpose of a research statement is it is basically the admissions committee asking you to show them what you will be doing for the next three to five years for MS or PhD positions. Take a week, do independent research, prepare a research statement to show what kind of research can you do in a week or so time. So that week or so is for you to prepare for writing your research statement. You have to conduct some sort of literature review for preparing this document. So you will need to do some certain brainstorming and some preparation for uh, writing this statement. In this uh, document, you have to ask yourself certain questions. In this worksheet, you will find those questions. But those questions basically help you gather these building blocks, these Lego bricks that later you can fit in your SOP and your research statement. Some of these Lego bricks, the answers from this worksheet will go into your statement of purpose and so some of these will go into your research uh, statement. Those questions are, what are your top three reasons for pursuing an MS or a PhD position in the first place? Then, uh, what are your top three interests in a broader sense, something you will be interested in for at least the, the next seven to 10 years? After that, uh, specify your research interests in a more narrow manner, something that can be potentially your MS or PhD research topic. Define three topics and answer some more questions from this worksheet about each of those topics. For example, what can be the potential challenges? How many other people are working in that area? Is there any patent or industry product or any startup related to that area that is currently working? What are the questions that have already been answered by other people in that research area? And what are some of the questions that are unanswered that you can pursue as your potential MS or PhD area? Also gather your experience and your skills. Your most relevant experience in terms of duration, something you worked on, like a job or an internship or a project, something in terms of time that you have spent a certain amount of time doing, gather that experience and also gather your most relevant skills in terms of programming languages, hardware programming, any skill, any other skill that you have most relevant to those PhD or MS topics that you want to pursue. 
after you have all these building blocks you have done sort of the the brainstorming the initial research and now you have the building block that you can use to start writing your sop or your research statement tip number 2 gather your resources if you are pursuing a degree in electrical engineering computer science and engineering related field use ieee explore and don't underestimate the power of using author keywords in advanced search in ieee explore if you are a student right now or doing undergrad or masters you will have access to ieee explore or some other resources like that the journals in your field through your school so check with your school if you have access to those to find some relevant research papers also use tools like research rabbit lit maps and connected papers to find the related research related to the phd the three topics that you have listed in the previous step when we did the worksheet uh, use these papers and read you don't have to read the entire papers but read at least the abstract and conclusion of at least 10 related papers for each topic if you are defining if you're answering the questions about three topics that we listed in the previous uh, worksheet step then do this for all three of them read at least 10 super relevant super recent papers don't don't read research that was done 20 years ago or so go to ieee explore or whatever is the equivalent uh, established area for in in your field of interest find the most recent papers uh most respected recent papers and read at least abstract and conclusion from at least 10 papers now after you have gathered the resources and read around 10 abstracts and conclusions you're ready to move on to tip number 3 to make connections and identify gaps basically after reading the abstracts and conclusions you should be able to connect the dots and see who cited who who worked with who and then identify from in conclusions or towards the end of the papers authors use words like beyond the scope of this paper or for future works so in those papers that you downloaded look for keywords like this that's where authors will be suggesting the work that they could not do in that paper and what they suggest to others to do in future those are your potential phd or ms research topics so make a list of those potentially related suggested works and topics and make these this this will help you basically identify the gap in the literature for you to be able to pursue a phd in it so far so good right so by now you should be able to articulate your research problem your the question that you want to investigate and hopefully solve during your ms or phd my tip number 4 is to start backwards from an outline a lot of students make this mistake when they start writing a, an sop or a research statement they start from paragraph 1 start writing 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 and keep going on till the end don't work like that because that makes you lose a structure so start with an outline and a structure for your doesn't matter if you're writing an sop or a research statement for both start with the outline and structure note down the key points that you want to highlight in it For example, for a research statement, here's an example structure that you can use. Start with an introduction. Basically, define your research problem, your goals and objectives in your first paragraph. Then in your second paragraph, you can give a little bit of background. You can cite the related works and show how other people are approaching the problem, how are they solving. This is your chance to demonstrate your research skills. This is your chance to show that you can find the most relevant most up to date research in the field so cite the most recent and most important works there also don't forget to use the proper formatting for example the ieee style or whatever style is common in your field don't forget to cite the references in their proper format so give a little bit of background in terms of the related works then afterwards uh mention how what is your initial idea what is your initial plan in the same paragraph related works and research methodology basically should be your second paragraph you can propose your work a little bit what what are what is it that you want to explore during your ms or phd your proposed approach a summary of your proposed approach if you might say of course at this point you you won't have you won't know what are you going to do for the next 4 years of your life or 5 years of your life but this will be an initial idea what is your initial idea what do you want to do After that your next paragraph can be your proposed plan for your PhD and here make it very very coherent in this paragraph 
For example, this should have a plan for what do you want to do in the year one of your PhD, year two, year three, year four, what do you want to do? Nothing is gonna be what you define in this document in the end. Because before you start your MS or PhD, you don't know anything, but you still have to propose it. Later, plans change, life changes, even sometimes PhD topics changed. But this is your chance to demonstrate that you have the ability to conduct research in a structured manner. So your fourth paragraph can be your proposed PhD plan and don't forget to include a timeline in that. Uh, the last paragraph of your statement can be your conclusion where you sort of summarize and reiterate why you're the best candidate. You can actually add before the conclusion another paragraph if you want uh, to show why you're the right candidate to conduct the proposed research where you can sort of reflect upon your most important skills and experiences related to this particular research that might come in handy for you and that might enable you to be able to conduct this research. And then in conclusion, you can reiterate some of the highlights, some of the key points that you used in this document. Now here's my tip number five. Don't forget to include a timeline. This is your chance to demonstrate to the admissions committee that you have a plan for conducting your proposed research in an organized manner. Not everybody will include that, so this is your chance to stand out. Show the admissions committee, outline your research, your proposed research plan in a timeline with specific goals and specific milestones, and this will make you stand out. Now, if you want to get your SOP or your research statement reviewed by me, the link is in the description, but before you write that, don't make the common mistakes that other people are making in their SOPs and in their research statements. Go watch that and I will see you in the next one.